Whenever they faced off in uh, Broward, he looked him in his eyes and he said, I'm going to knock you out. That's what Shane said to Kevin. Yeah, I don't see, I don't know. I don't want to put the Santa stamp on it, but I don't know if this is going to go to the judges. Kevin getting busy. Yeah, right off the bat, utilizing those kicks in his range. Him being the, the slightly taller and sitting getting longer range fighter there. He's doing a good job of utilizing that range there, opening up with some kicks. And he's in and out there with his punches and his kicks. He's not just standing there and just, you know, admiring his work. Interesting to seek out yeah, the I was, I, I, That was a little odd to me because he was doing so well. Maintaining the range with the kicks that he sh shot in on the takedown. That, sometimes, you know, fighters can get a little nervous. Big takedown. Yeah. And they want to get and they want to get close. They you know, close after yeah. a while, they want to get close. Sometimes they get, like you mentioned, get nervous. Be like, oh man, this is going a little bit too good. Wait, let me. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's not so. I didn't. I wanted it to go this good, but it's yeah. really going this good. So let me, <laughs> let me slow it down a little bit. But he took him down, and now he's in the guard here of Shane Mastrada. Now let's see what Kevin Morales is going to do after this takedown. Is he going to utilize? enough energy to be able to keep him down and also too does he want to fish for ground and pound submissions but it looks like Shane Mastrada is trying to work his way up but Kevin Morales stops him with that guillotine there as he sinks it in let's see how tight it is that's this could be dangerous with long arms and that was that was a very well executed setup too Shane rolling through yeah it's almost that's like tight. yeah like Kevin sort of beat him in to stand up so I can get your neck yeah, very similar to John Jones and Cyril Gunn. Push him up against the fence when they try to stand up, go he right for the out. neck, yeah. But he rolls out of it. Yeah, Shane would do better stand on that single leg. When you got a taller guy like that, sometimes it's hard to collect both legs. It's a lot of energy you waste. You're better off with a single leg. So already some Nice stand up and a submission attempt from Kevin Morales. Then less than 30 seconds here, Kevin Morales turns the table on and now he initiates the take down here as he has Shane Mastrada's back up against the fence. He's able to pull him up. And that's what it's all about, that first 10 seconds and the last 10 seconds. It's been a great first round here for Kevin Morales. Yeah. Decisive reach advantage for Kevin Morales. Yeah, he did a good job in the first round staying behind that jab. Unlike we've seen in some of these, you know, younger, earlier fights here, these guys, you know, punch, punch, punch. Oh. There and we that go. Was, and that was exactly what he needed to do. He must have heard you. Shane needed to get after, and that's what he's doing here. Less than 10 seconds in. He, now you see he's got the his his le, his right leg scooped on, or yeah, he's got uh, Eric Kevin's right leg scooped. He needs to pull that out and try to straighten it as much as he can. Still driving. Kevin working his way up to his feet there. There he's got, he's sinking that arm in again. Yeah, Shane's head's just in a bad spot. You know, because he, he's going for that double leg. When you go for a double leg up against the fence, you leave your head open for these things. You want to stay on that single leg. Kevin looking composed. Especially a guy like Kevin Morales who has over 10 fights. There's no really position that Shane Mastrata can put him in that he hasn't seen before. Looking for that big slam there. Oh. And again, like that, that I, I, know, I know what he wanted to do. And he wanted to wow the crowd. And he wanted to make that statement. But it was a lot of energy for that lackluster result. 
Yeah. He got slammed in the first, so he, he wanted that. He wanted to get it back. Right? Yeah. He wanted to get it back. But, I mean, he's still in a, he's still in a better position now. But he's going to have to be able to do something with, to, with it because when you're dragging a guy in the deep waters, you don't want him to be comfortable. And right now, Kevin Morales looks pretty comfortable. Yeah, even though Shane Mastrada is, you know, clearly in control here, there's no damage. There's no, like you said, Kevin Morales doesn't feel like there's a threat there. There he's got the feet laced just for a moment. And right back up to their feet. And now Kevin here is searching for a double leg takedown of his own. And gets it. Going for a guillotine here. But I'm not sure. But his head pops out. Head. And now less than 30 seconds here, Kevin Morales looking to steal the round on top. Despite Shane initi initiating the takedown to start the round, he, he didn't mount much of an offense from it. And now, like you just said, Black Santa, he's been reversed. We'll see if Kevin can steal the round with a little offense. Yeah, exactly, because you, you know, essentially wasted over 90 seconds trying to drag this guy to the, down to the ground and keep him there. But then now the last 30 seconds, what are the judges going to see? You on bottom. And sometimes that last 10 to 30 seconds is what sticks fresh in the judges' minds the most. Yeah, Shane, he it. needs to push the pace and get him up against the cage and take him down, but this time keep him down. Kevin Morales, utilize that range. Let those strikes speak for themselves, just like you did in the beginning of that first round there. Nice overhand. Yeah, and Shane's got a – and Shane was you – know, and, and that's probably why he was so hesitant to shoot in the first round because he's shooting on that back leg in which Kevin Morales was whipping at him. He was lucky he caught it now because I've seen situations where guys shoot on that back leg and get flatlined. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and right here, this is where Shane Machado wants to be. But he's got to start crawling up. He's got to try to get Kevin Morales' shoulders on the floor and pin him down. There he goes. He got to, got to keep going higher. Yeah, it looks like Shane Mastro here trying to inch Kevin Morales up against the cage there. Pin him up against the cage there so he can land those ground and pound strikes there to the face. But Kevin Morales also, he can utilize the cage to get his back up against there and, and wall walk up. Because these punches to the body here, these baby taps aren't really going to do much of anything. Yeah, Shane's got to get busy. I mean, even if... I gave him the second round, but the judges may not have. I think he needs to still have a big round here to prove that he is the better fighter. There's control and there's offense, and, and this is just control. It's control, And he needs yeah. to get some offense out of it. And if Kevin Morales wants to get up, he has to not just push on the shoulders there, Shane Mastrata. He has to push on the side of his face, push on that air. Where the head and the neck goes, the body will follow. If you just push on the shoulder, this guy is going nowhere. And less than a minute left, I need a little bit more proactiveness out of Kevin Morales, a little bit more urgency to get up from underneath the bottom of Shane Mastrada. I think because Shane Mastrada is not landing any damage, Kevin Morales doesn't feel threatened here, so there's no urgency to get up. Yeah, but that, on a that happens a lot, card, right? You don't realize yeah. that. You don't realize it. Like, hey, I'm losing yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> You're just like, oh, he's not doing nothing. Ref, you should stand us up. And I think that's the mentality that they have sometimes, but you cannot have that mentality. No, it's your job to get up and exactly. get him off of you. Less than 30 seconds here. And I mean, yeah, like at this point, Kevin's kind of giving it away. Like he's just letting Shane control him and like it an offense or not, he controlled the entire round. And the last 10 seconds, they're a little bit too so late. And that's not to take nothing away from here, from Tallahassee, from Duval, from Broward, from here, Fort Pierce. But everybody knows three rounds home is in Orlando. We go to the judges' scorecards for decision. Let's see. 
Judge number one scores about 29-28, Morales. Judge number two, 29-28, Mistretta. And judge number three scores about 29-28 in favor of your new 155-pound MMA champion, Shane Mistretta. They gave it to him. They gave it to him. It was that control. It was that control for sure.